Let's start from the beginning. This is Johann Gutenberg. In the early 1400s, Gutenberg created the first ever font family or typeface called Black Letter. And also, a few other things like... The invention of the printing press, responsibility for kickstarting humanity into the printing revolution and in the Age of Enlightenment by making learning much more accessible to the masses. Pretty cool guy. Anyway, back on topic. A typeface is a set of one or more fonts that share an overall design, while the word font is referring to the delivery mechanism of the typeface design itself. These two words are interchangeable with each other in modern usage. And speaking of modern... We are not there yet. That said, we are jumping from the 1400s to the 1700s, where a certain William Colson created a typeface which features straighter serifs, which are the small line strokes regularly attached to the end of a larger stroke in a letter or symbol. If the typeface you use has these strokes, then it's called a serif typeface, and in the year 1816, more than a hundred years later, another certain William Coulson, the fourth of his name in his own lineage of typographers, created the first typeface without any of these strokes in the end of the letters at all, without serifs, and uses the French word for without to name this new form of typeface. Which kinda caught on. Max Mettinger created the typeface called Nue Has Grotesque, which is known today as Helvetica. It was used by most companies then and even now, to the point where companies just make their own variations of it to avoid paying for the millions of yearly licensee fees. There is even a documentary about it. But, for every good and popular, there is a bad and ugly. For every yang, there is a yin. And, in the typeface world, a certain font has got that honor. That font is called... Papyrus. But, as the yin and yang philosophy goes, when you combine two contradictory opposites, the good and popular, the bad and the ugly, then you get a typeface that is all that combined. Good and bad, nice and ugly, popular yet unpopular. Ladies and gentlemen, the living paradox of the typeface world. Comic Sans. Back in 1994, a man called Vincent Conner, at his time working in a small company called Microsoft, was instructed by his boss, Melinda Gates, to create a font for the cartoon dog in Microsoft Bob to speak in. And so, within three days, Conner created Comic Sans, taking inspiration from hand-drawn fonts from comic books with the intention of creating a silly yet fun font. It never actually made it to the final version of Microsoft Bob, but was released in so many Microsoft products after that. Comic Sans became a popular font of choice for a lot of people back in the 1990s in particular. And in its defense, it was originally designed to appear in screens that were aliased, giving it a much more readable and proper design look than how it looks in more high-res screens of today's time. But even then, the British Dyslexia Association calls Comic Sans a very children-friendly font for kids with dyslexia due to how the letters are slanted. 
Now, let's jump in recent time. Twenty years ago, I made the best font in the world. <laughs> Comic Sans has gathered a bad reputation, to say the least, making it the most infamous font of all time. Online, there are Kill Comic Sans games you can play, anti-Comic Sans movements, and websites dedicated to it, providing you of the better handwritten fonts you could download and use instead. And in the Helvetica documentary I've talked about before, the top comment for its trailer on YouTube is the following. Why? Where did all this hate come from? Why are people so annoyed by a font choice? It doesn't make any sense. Until you see some of the uses of Comic Sans by some people, which, as stated earlier, it was meant to be a fun and silly font, only used for fun and silly design situations. When you use a font that was designed to look purposely silly and fun, to describe things like funerals or important safety notices or anything that requires seriousness, that is when people began to hate the use of this font. So. Maybe if we start taking responsibility for our own actions, that choice being a bad transition effect, or a choice to go eat at a bad restaurant, or a bad design choice, Comic Sans doesn't disappoint people. People disappoint people. There are choices for everything, and it's up to us to make the best ones we possibly can. For a better future.